Now, if you do anything more than just build the odd website for yourself, chances are when you set things up, you've got a lot of repetitive things you do. Same plugins, same settings, just basically tweaking everything to get it to that basic starting point before you can even get creative. And this is where a blueprint for your website comes in incredibly handy. Now, first of all, I quickly want to say that even though I've been using blueprints in various different sort of formats over the last God knows how many years, a couple of videos recently, one by Kevin Geary about his blueprint and also one by Carl Van Dusen from the admin bar about his Generate Press and Generate Blocks blueprint, opened my eyes to a couple of different things that maybe I hadn't thought of that I've started to implement, which has also then led me on to other areas that I wanted to customize or set things up in my own way that I can get a site up and running super quickly. Now, I use different technologies to what they're using, but there are some crossover similarities. And I also want to say that while this video is about my bricks blueprint, I've also got one that is, again, a work in progress, something that's always changing, always being enhanced and tweaked, for generate press and generate blocks, which is what I use for simpler projects or ones that I don't necessarily need all the functionality that something like Bricks has. So let's go through and let me show you. Now I'm gonna go into every single detail, every single setting. If you want that kind of information, you wanna follow someone's blueprint, check out Kevin Geary's because he does go into exorbitant amount of detail and it's an hour plus video. This is not going to be that, but it's gonna give you an idea of how I've got things set up what I'm doing, my thought process behind it, the tools I use, and maybe some of the reasoning as to why I've got things set in certain ways. And this thing can hopefully help you with either the blueprints that you're using, or if you don't use one, kind of show you the very sort of best way forward that you can start building things for yourself, and then you can go off on your own journey with it. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with where my blueprint or blueprints are actually housed and why it's set up in that way. Now, one of the things that I've been mindful of is that I don't want to have my blueprint set up on a server with a hosting company that I may not actually use on that website. So for example, what I'm talking about is I've got a reseller account with a hosting company that I use for my commercial clients. Most of these are legacy clients, but they are clients nonetheless. So they're paying, you know, you kind of get the idea. But then I've also got a couple of different hosting plans with things like Cloudways, Hostinger and so on. And I've got sites on those, there may be landing sites and so on. And I use these to test things out, to have live sites on and so on. But I want somewhere that's kind of like agnostic to that, that I can deploy wherever I want to, but I've got everything set up in one location. And for that, I use InstaWP. Now I've covered this in other videos. If you want to check those out, I'll link those in the description below. So this is my current setup with InstaWP. This changes every single day. I use this all the time. There's my blueprint for bricks. And you can also see if I scroll down, I've got my GP blueprint. Print, so I've got the starters there. And the benefit of this is I've got one location and I can log in when there's an update, update everything, and everything is ready to go with the latest version. And I don't have to worry about putting keys in and all those kinds of things. Everything works pretty much flawlessly. If I want to deploy this, and this is one of the real benefits of doing it this way, let me just show you how easy this is. There's my blueprint. All I need to do is come out of the three dots and I'm gonna say I want to have a clone of this, I can click to clone it, I can give it a name, I can set it as a temporary site which will go in 30 days if I'm just demoing things and I might forget about it. Or if I'm working on a client site or a project of my own, I can reserve the site. For this, we'll just leave it as a temporary site. We'll just call this Test Blueprint and we'll click on Clone and we'll let that carry on. Now you can see this is creating a site backup, so it backs up exactly where it is, and then it's gonna clone an identical copy to this with everything in place, all my plugins, my theme, my templates, all my settings, everything is ready to go. And there we go, in around 30 seconds, everything is set up. And now I can easily go in, I can log into the back end, so I can go to Magic Login, that'll log me straight into the dashboard, and everything is there ready for me to start going. But now I've got my blueprint all ready to go so I can start working on this completely. And once I finish building the site and I'm ready to launch it, all I need to do is come out of the three dots and from there I can use the migrate option or I can just use a migration plugin if I prefer to do that, like WP Vivid, those kinds of tools. The other benefit of this is that I can have, using the migrate option and using InstaWP, I can actually use this as a staging site and keep that link between the live site and my site here on InstaWP, and I can make changes, test things out, and I can push things back and forth in a nice staging kind of fashion. I can create duplicates of this if I want to, I can create versions of this. And then when I finish with it, if I want to, I can just simply come in and I can choose to delete, you can see I can copy that and we'll delete it. And that's now taken off my InstaWP account and the live site is live or my testing is finished. 
Okay, so now we've talked about that, let's go and have a look at what my actual blueprint entails. So let's log into the dashboard. The first thing we probably want to take a look at is what do I actually have installed? Now, like I say, bear in mind, this is a work in progress. So there's things are going to be added into this. But if we come into the plugins, you'll see it is a very minimal setup. ACF Pro, because well, let's be honest about it, I use that on pretty much every site, even for simple things. And because I've got the LTD, I don't really worry about having to use the free version. I may as well install Pro. Advanced Thema, because well, it just makes the whole way of working with bricks so much quicker and easier. So many little time-saving options. Core Framework, because that's my framework of choice when it comes to building my websites to give me that flexibility. Happy Files Pro, because let's be honest about it, media management, page management, post management, and so on in uh, sort of WordPress itself is a little bit sucky at this point in time. So anything we can use to make our lives easier is definitely a positive. And then we've got SEO Press, which you can see I haven't activated. And depending upon the project, it may only require SEO Press free, but I also use the Pro if it's my own projects or it's a paying client that wants something that has a little bit more control over everything. And then inside each of these, I've got things set up the way that I want. So for example, if we come into the media section, for example, if we open this up, you can see I've already created a couple of folders using Happy Files. So I've got my fonts for the custom fonts that I use to start things off. I've got my placeholder images then so for anything for templates or anything like that things that on the actual live site when I move things over start developing for an actual client or project these would be replaced with the actual live images then all I need to do is go and delete that placeholders folder and all the stuff in there because they won't be used anyway the posts I set things up inside here so if I create custom posts you know or, or typical posts I want to have media included in files uh, images, those kinds of things. I tend to break things up into the year so I can set this up. So I can say 2024 for this, 25, 26, so on. Those just easy management of content. And then UI elements are basically things like logos that you're going to use on the live site. You can see things from my, my login, registration pages, and so on, my sort of default 404 template. These images are things that I won't delete because they're part of the overall design unless those templates are replaced and removed. So it's a nice, easy way of managing your media. And if you want to set things up, especially if you've got a blog or something that's going to have a lot of posts or pages on it, you can also use Happy Files to organize and manage your posts, pages, custom post types, whatever content you want in exactly the same fashion. So if you want to organize your content into years, into categories, types, and so on, this is a lovely way of doing it, and it works so well with bricks. It's a brilliant combination. Again, I've got videos for all this. If you want to check out the, the videos I've got covering all things to do with Bricks Builder, just go to learnbricksbuilder.com, and all my videos are on there, and written versions of it, various information, and some enhanced tutorials and things like that on there as well. So check those out. Okay, so that's the sort of media management side of things. If we come into the core framework, which like I say is my CSS framework of choice, this is currently just set up with the default values and has everything that is default inside you. So the typography, spacing, components and so on. Now this is something that I may change as I become more accustomed to working with the CSS framework but also if I find that I don't use things, which in a lot of projects I probably won't, I can easily come in and delete those from you. So for example, if we come into design, let's say for example, I was creating the design that was everything was a sort of a 90 degree angle. I didn't have any kind of corner radiuses. Well, I could easily come in and I could just delete all these corner radiuses, strip that extra information out of my CSS file, making it a little bit smaller. And then my core framework file just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until I've got to the point where I've got only the definitions that I need for that project or from my starting point moving forward. So there are going to be things inside here that I will just never ever use. And there's going to be times where I'll add additional things like different select groups in variable groups, I expand things, change things. And if I want to change my typography, for example, I might want to change the ratio or the minimum maximum font sizes for my content, for my headings and so on. I can do all of that inside here and I've got total flexibility. Then I know that when I start a site, all those definitions are going to be there very easily to set up. Super simple. Then save my changes, preview my CSS if I need to. And you can see this is telling me that currently this is 54.7 kilobytes and minified is just over 11. As I strip things out, they'll be removed from here. That will reduce in size. You kind of get the idea where I'm coming from. Get a 
absolutely optimized setup. Now for this, I am using the Bricks add-on. You can see I've got that enabled because this just integrates it directly into Bricks and makes the whole process of working with it just a little bit smoother and easier. But you can absolutely get away with the free version of the core framework and then just import those in as a CSS file and use those. You'll just lose the ability to simply right click and, and access the predefined options that you have with the Bricks plugin as part of the core framework and Bricks itself. Now, if we come into the Bricks panel, inside here you can see I've got Advanced Thema. If we go into the settings, I've got this set up the way that I like to work with it. So not everything is enabled. There's actually quite a lot that's not enabled inside you. And I don't use things like the global colors and so on. All this is controlled by my framework. But you can see that I do like to have the builder tweaks. So there's a lot of things inside you that allow me to tweak what I can access just to make my life a little bit quicker and easier when I'm working. But again, you don't have to use this. You can set things up in whatever way you want. You can have the most vanilla version of bricks if you want to, with no framework, without advanced thema or anything else. But for me, these speed up my workflow. They make my life a little bit quicker and easier. And when you combine all these things with the starter site blueprint and so on, it does help me get up and running in a double quick time. Now, moving on from there, I've got things set up in Bricks itself. So we come into the settings, we take a quick look inside here. I'm not going to go through everything here because, again, this is probably going to be different for everybody and how you like to work with Bricks itself. But, for example, I do have some basic things that I want to set up. I'm working on custom login, registration, lost password, and so on pages. So I still have a couple left to create inside you. But I've got my custom login. I've removed the ability to people to use the short code to access this via the sort of the default login. It will be forced over to my custom login. Same thing with the registration. And I'm just going to create the lost password, reset password. And then I've got a, a more bespoke login, registration, lost password process, and so on. And I can control this, brand it, and style it. And I'll show you the templates in a moment. Other things I want to make sure that I've got, coming to the builder access, for example, I want full access for the administrators. But unless I've got someone that I would feel comfortable giving access to, I set this to no access for anybody else. You may want to give access to the editor, if you've got an editor, and you can choose they can edit content or full access. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is that if you've got someone that has a site built like this and it's a blog-based or information-based site so they create in posts, I have a template setup, which again I'll show you, that allows them to have the Gutenberg editor to create and lay out content using the Gutenberg blocks and patterns and so on. And then that will display inside my template structure with things like the featured image, the header, and any maybe custom meta information and so on that I create. I can build that into the template or templates if I want to and give a certain level of control while removing any control and access to bricks. So it kind of gives a hybrid approach for content inside posts and so on. And you could easily make this available in pages, create custom templates or patterns, and you can give sort of what level of access you want and still allow some flexibility and creativity to be included for your end user. But entirely up to you. For me, that's the way I like to work. Templates, I use Bricks Maven in this example, but that may change and expand, or I might not even use them at all, depending upon the project. But just having this here, because it's a remote server, there's nothing stored on my server, I can delete this, add whatever I want, and I can use this to get things up and running in double quick time. Especially great if I'm using this blueprint as a starting point for tutorials where I want to demonstrate something and I want to have a site or at least a page or two created, I can mock those up in a matter of a few minutes and I can then demonstrate the tutorial. Just makes my life easy. If we come into the builder then, you can see we've got options inside here. I like to say uh, the autosave. It doesn't bother me in the way that I work right now, but I know some people dislike it. Well, you can disable that if you want to. Set it up the way that you want. You can see I also enable the duplicate and delete for the, the elements panel. And if we scroll down, a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to is if you are intended to use any kind of dynamic data, which I do, things like ACF or just natural sort of uh, native WordPress content, like you know your author information, posts, pages, and so on. You want to render that dynamic data on your canvas, otherwise you end up not being able to see anything. So I recommend enabling these features. Same with show dynamic data uh, keys in the dropdown. As a bare minimum, I think you should have those options enabled. But you can tweak this, and I probably will come back and tweak this as things go on. Performance, for example, you can disable various different things, like I disable emojis, Google fonts, because I'd rather upload my own fonts and control that. Disable in jQuery migrate. Uh, my CSS files are external files, but you can have external or inline. It's entirely up to you. 
I do not recommend caching the query loops because this can cause some issues where you don't see the updates as you're making changes. So I would recommend don't cache those, leave those as they are. Uh, up to you then how you configure everything else. And if you want to add in your API keys for things like Unsplash, Google Maps and so on, you can add them here as well. Again, for me, I don't really use these. Uh, and if I did, I would probably, especially when it comes to things like maps and so on, it would be the client's API because you've got to put credit card information in and I don't want them to be tied into my credit card and my account on Google and therefore ultimately I could end up getting billed for their usage. So this is where you could drop that in. And again, if you want to put this information in to get sort of up and running super quick, you can put in whatever you want. And the same thing goes for custom code. You may have header scripts, body scripts, or custom CSS you want to apply. Well, you can drop that info inside you and you can have that on every single site. Pretty cool and really easy to do then. Save your settings and you've got that kind of default setup in place. Now at the moment, I've only got a few templates, but this is probably going to grow. First of all, I've got a default header and a default footer. They're just basically using like a Bricks Maven template for a very simple header, very simple footer. So at least when I go onto a site or a page, I've got something in place that I can see how it's going to look. And then I can go in, remove what's there, use a different template, start from scratch, whatever I want to do. But it's better to have something so you can test things out and make sure everything's working than have nothing and have to do it every single time. Same thing goes for my 404 page. If we take a look at this, I've created a nice little sort of 404 page with some useful links and things on there. So you can jump back to the homepage, you can go to search. I've shown how to do this. I've got a video showing exactly how to create exactly what I've got here. I'll link that in the description. But again, you can check that on learnbricksbuilder.com. All these tutorials are on there. But I think it's quite nice to have a more interesting, a bit more fun kind of 404 page and have that set up as default. If you want to change it, you can do. Maybe even include things like some basic search results, some content that you've added to the site recently. Customize it however you want, but still good to have something. So even if you don't get around to doing it, you've got a 404 page there that's better than just 404 not found. Looks a bit more professional. The default template for Gutenberg. Now this is something that I've only recently added in. If we go and edit this with Bricks, you'll see what I've done. I've created a basic template that's a kind of catch-all for any post that's added to the site. Now, I'm not using custom post types on this particular setup, but if you were, you could apply the template to those if it was applicable or create different templates and use the same principles. But what this has is a mix of standard post title, which is just a standard uh, Bricks element, same goes with an image, it's a standard image element that's using the featured image, so dynamically. But then I'm using the post content, and I've set this to be the data source of WordPress. So you can switch this between WordPress and Bricks. So what this means is, this section here, I can use Gutenberg inside the normal post with no bricks included at all. And then anything we use, like galleries, images, headings, all those kinds of things, all those will show inside here, and they'll pick up the styling and everything that we have applicable on the site, or obviously they can be overridden if you want to, but you can control then what access and what features are available inside Gutenberg, so you can strip that back to the bare minimum and not let your end user then cock up your site. But because they only have access to this section here, Everything else around it, your headers, your footers, the featured image, title, maybe ACF data or other metadata you want to include in there, like post dates and so on, all of that sits outside it, and they only do is fill the box in, and that is filled out with no control from their side of things. But they can control this main area and use Gutenberg to create the content in there. So this is, for me, this is a nice hybrid approach. But also, the other benefit is, if you decide in the future that you don't want to use uh, Bricks Builder, all of that content that's been generated using Gutenberg will be unaffected. So if you change to a theme or you change to a different builder or whatever, because that sits outside of the builder itself and it's just using native WordPress functions, all that will be still untouched, which gives you a lot more flexibility than relying upon a page builder or maybe even using ACF meta fields and so on. I think this is a nicer approach to, to sort of setting things up. And you can create as many of these as you want and use them for posts, page templates, whatever you want. Pretty cool approach. Now, on top of that, I said that I've also got custom registration, custom login, and we have lost passwords and so on. If we come into the pages section, you can see that I've got happy files set up here. So you can see I've got my admin pages, standard pages. So 
we'll see exactly how things are laid out. So if I go into the admin pages, for example, there's my account registration and my dashboard login. Unfortunately, you can't use templates for these. You do have to use standard pages. So they could be deleted, but you know, you could probably lock these down in one way or another. For me, I'm not too bothered about it. But if we come into, for example, the, the dashboard login, we'll open this up. This is just a basic standard layout that I've set up and I've included a native form function from Bricks, but you can see this is set up to have custom fields for username, password, and remember me. And if we scroll down, because it's a form, we can set the actions. And I've got an action of user login and redirect. So it'll redirect after they've logged in to the admin. And then I can set the redirect up where it goes to. And I can also set the user login and I can specify the different fields. We can add in spam protection if you want to. You can see it's very simple simple what I've set up here. And then I've also created a custom class for the account form. So then any of the other forms that I create, so my registration form and so on, I can just apply the same class and all my styles and formatting will all be pulled in from there. So it just makes the whole process of setting these up a couple of minutes and they're all in place for the first time. And then they're saved, job done. You just then set the settings inside the brick settings panel and you're good to go. You can see if we come to the account registration page, Basically the same thing, the only difference is if we take a look at the form, this time we've got a different action on there. You can see the action on here is set up to user registration. Again, we've got a redirect so we can specify where we re redirect it to. You can get creative with these if you want to, but I think these just look so much better. If we preview this, this is what the end user would see. Replace the logo, replace the colors because it's using the color that's all set up inside core framework anyway and, and variables, whatever relevant. So all this can be changed from using the core framework. You can kind of see how all these things start to work together. And all this in place means that I can hit the ground running super quickly. Now, if we come back into one of my templates, you can see that where I've got advanced Thema installed, I've got various different sections and options set up the way that I want. So you can see I've got these quick actions down the left-hand side for the most common things that I access. If we go to the right-hand side, same kind of thing here. If I want to add a section, container, block div, text, headings, you know, content, stuff like that, images, all this is available over the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and everything is where I want it to be. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is that if we come into the settings and we come into our theme styles, I've got what's called a global theme style, which is kind of like my catch all. And I've got some conditions set inside here. So this is for the entire website, unless of course I need to overwrite that at some point. I set my typography up inside here. Again, if we come in and take a look, you can see I'm using variables as part of core framework. So if I need to change anything, everything is referencing that framework, which means that Setting things up just means tweaking it in one location, everything else updates across the site for me. And I've got really minimal changes inside here. We've got conditions, typography, and the elements container, which is set up to match the size that I've got set as my kind of base size when it comes to core framework, which for me is 1366, as opposed to, you know, whatever else, 1400, 1600, whatever it is. So other than that, I don't really set much else up inside here. But again, this is something that may well change as I come across situations where I think that would be a really good thing to add in. Because I think with any of these kind of blueprints, they are a work in progress. They're never at the end, they're never finished. They are, it does what it needs now, and then you'll work on a project and you'll go, I really wish I had that in there. I'm gonna tweak that. Then you'll go back and add that to your blueprint. Simple as that. But that's kind of where my blueprint is at at this point in time. And like I say, you've seen how quick I can deploy it. You've seen how I've got the basics set up. And you can see by working with a framework and kind of linking everything together, it makes it very quick and easy to be able to make global changes to your entire site. Having the custom templates for your header, your footer, your post catch all, all those kinds of things alongside your registration, login, lost password, and so on, gives the branding, gives the overall setup a little bit more professionalism. And then when you are ready to launch this, all those things are done and you can focus on the more fun stuff, which is creating the things that you don't need to repeat, each one being individual or unique. Anyway, that's my current setup. But what's your setup? Are you using a blueprint? Let me know in the comment section down below. What kind of things you do? What kind of tools you're using? What platform are you using? How do you deploy things? All those cool things. I'd love to know how you set things up and operate gives me ideas and I might find that I adopt some of the things that you actually put out there. So please do let me know. As always, all applicable links for everything I've covered, including the tutorials that I've referenced in the videos, they'll all be in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.